Hi, this is Roger in Finland, and today we're going to be kitting the Zcam E2C with small rig parts. One disclaimer, you probably have guessed by the size of the channel, none of this is sponsored. And now for the impatient ones, I'm just going to give you the different parts. The cage is the CV2372, then the side handle, this wooden thing, which to me it's better than the reset option for the E2C, it's a HDS2457. The really tiny small top handle, it's the MD2393. And then the Arca Swiss plate that I have in the bottom is the APU2389. And this is how it looks. And now let's go more in detail. So the cage, which is the CV2372, unlike the E2 cage, is made in one piece. The cage for the E2 is modular. I believe that the cages for the flagship models are also one piece only. It attaches through three different screws, two in the bottom and one at the top. And by the way, the reason that I'm not just showing the camera here is because I'm using it to film myself to make this video, to give some consistency on talking about the Zcam E2C, then maybe I should use the Zcam E2C. So everything that I'm talking, I'm going to be showing through B-roll. Then it comes with lens support as well. And then something that I like very much and that has been happening lately with, with uh, small rig cages is that it has the tools integrated. So there is a small Allen key for the small Allens that hold the lens support and then those thumb screwdrivers for uh, putting the different screws and locking the cage to the camera itself. It does have NATO rails in the side but not on the top and that's something that I'm missing. So what doesn't it have? Even if I had mentioned it, the NATO rail on top. That's something I enjoy very much in other cages, like the Blackmagic uh, Pocket 4K. And the reason is because I like to dismantle things quickly and without tooling, and having handles attached to the NATO rail, I find that it's the easiest for me. That's what I would like. So probably I will end up putting some one of those really, really flat profile NATO rails on top and then using that one. But it would just be nice that it would be a possibility. Then it doesn't have any cold shoe anywhere. Of course, the workaround is to add a small cold shoe. Then it does not have an integrated Arca Swiss plate in the bottom, which I believe that the E2 cage does have. But I do understand that for people that just don't use that system, it's a nuisance. So it may be a better option that they offer the possibility to attach any um, tripod plate below it. And something which is very nice because many cages don't come with it is it comes with HDMI and USB-C clamps. For many other cages you need to buy that separately it always adds to the price with this one it comes with it out of the box then the top handle i chose a really really tiny one the e2c is small this cage is still small when you start adding the grip and these things it gets bigger but still it's a fairly uh, small footprint camera so i wanted a small handle i would love to have as i mentioned before this same type of handle with a nato rail attachment because I find it uh, a bit easier, but that's it. What is nice is that this one has a relocating pins on the front and I'm going to be using that to mount uh, the monitor uh, on it as well. There's nothing much to say. Very simple, just a set job. Then the interesting part here, I think it's the, the side wooden handle. That one I can show because at the moment the camera is on a tripod, so I have it dismantled. And this one is branded for the Z cam, but it can work with other cameras and cages. I believe in the small rig uh, website, they have it mounted on a black magic pocket cinema 4k as well feels like having a grip on top of a grip a little bit silly but anyway it's very comfortable for big hands it will have big hands and this fits just nicely i actually wonder um, if people with small hands will have troubles with it it's pretty big and it fits nicely next to the camera the best thing of this and why i think that it's better than the rosette option for the e2c is that it's very low profile so it mounts through a quick release plate which is just nice because it's very easy to put on a lot and the problem with the rosette handles and the E2C is that the E2C cage does not have an RA mounting uh, point, which means that you need to add a piece, which is the RA uh, rosette mounting, and then the handle, and the handle ends up being very far away from the body. That might be something that you want for stability purposes, but then it's you're building a much bigger rig. But if you want something super compact and that the handle is just next to the camera, this is a much better option. The drawback is that it's in the same vertical position always because it's mounted vertically like this. With the RE reset, you have the possibility to inclinate it. And I think that's a very, very nice thing to have. All in all for this camera, I think that this is still a better option. Hi, this is Future Me out here with the dog. 
and I forgot to say one drawback about that wooden handle and that is that it makes it a little bit more difficult and more uncomfortable to pull the SD card. But now let's go back to the past indoor warm me. And then the last piece of the kit is the Arca Swiss for cages from small rig and the nice part of it is that it mounts below on the cage and you don't need to take it off to actually get the camera out of the cage since it, remo it leaves some space for the thumb screws. The problem is that it doesn't quite work for the E2C cage because it has two screws and I couldn't find any position under the cage that would allow me to still unscrew both at the same time. I still need to try to move it around so it might have been a user error the first time that I tried to mount it and it's not a big deal anyway because I think this camera will live inside the cage always. Another thing that the past me comfortable and cozy and warm at home forgot is this V-mount mount and this is to mount the V-mount battery like this. Back to warmness. And before closing I wanted to address a question which is why do I need the handheld rig for this camera? For two reasons. One, I'm not really a filmmaker. I have a full-time job and I just do these YouTube videos for fun. Still, I will have fun shooting videos and sometimes I like doing handheld. But this camera has an atrociously bad rolling shutter. So why would I want to have it handheld? Well, the A6400 is also really, really bad when it comes to rolling shutter. And still, I used it to make a short film and there was one scene that was fully handheld with a lot of movement. And the rolling shutter didn't bother me because of the nature of the scene. So I can see some cases where you will want to use this camera handheld as well. Another one is that, once again, I'm a hobbyist. I'm going to be using this camera to shoot videos at home with my kids. And things that I like to do is just to sit on the ground and put the camera on my lap or like lean to a wall or just lean to a table into it so that I don't need to mount a tripod but I have enough stability and that little bit of movement will not bother me. For those reasons, having a handle will make it much easier to shoot compared to just holding the awkwardly small cute cube shape box that the camera is. So that's why I'm having this rig. I hope you liked this video or find it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and we're gonna see you soon for some more content.